Our next inductee, Rick Schiavone. One of the most decorated diving coaches in the country, Rick Schiavone spent 36 years as Stanford's diving coach before retiring last April. Rick Schiavone is a, f yes. Rick Schiavone is a four-time NCAA Diving Coach of the Year and a nine-time Pac-12 Diving Coach of the Year. He coached divers to 18 NCAA Swimming and Diving Team titles, 12 NCAA Individual Diving titles, 40 Individual Pac-12 titles, and 115 All-America Honors. Rick has coached numerous United States diving teams and coached at the last seven U.S. Olympic trials. He was assistant head coach for the U.S. Olympic team in 2012 and helped coach Cardinal standout Christian Ibsen to a bronze medal in London. Stanford diver, NCAA champion, and fellow Stanford Hall of Famer Eileen Riccatelli is presenting Coach Giovanni's award, award tonight. Eileen, Rick, please come to the stage. One day more, another day, another destiny. Never ever... So I had to follow the basketball players. Good? Okay, hi everyone. I had the privilege of diving for Rick from 1990 to 97, and then helped him coach the age group te team here until 2006. I haven't been back in eight years, so it's wonderful to You know, he, he really started from scratch, and he learned as he went along, probably never dreaming that he would be inducted into the Hall of Fame today. So, pretty incredible. Um, Rick had a special way of getting the most out of his divers. Uh, most of the Stanford divers...
and on behalf of all of your divers from the past 36 years, thank you for being our coach, our mentor, our friend, for teaching us how to dream and for having such a positive impact in all of our lives. We congratulate you on achieving greatness and be for becoming a true legend in the sport of diving. Thank you, I appreciate it. Wow. Uh, okay, I'd like to start by thanking the Athletic Department and the Hall of Fame Committee for this great honor. I'd like to congratulate my fellow inductees, and more importantly, I'd like to give a general thank to all the people who made this 36-year journey possible. The athletic directors, the swimming coaches, my friends, my special friend, I was told I had this of why Stanford Diving was so special to me and hopefully special to my athletes. First, how did it all start? And yes, Eileen was right, I do not know how to dive. <laughs> but for some reason I was doing it in, in college and then doing my master's degree to make some money on the side. So I, when I decided to come out to Stanford it was to do a PhD in sports psychology. So I drove out here and I had done, done my homework and heard that in the winters it goes to 61, the low 60s, high 50s, so when I landed on the campus, my first hour was walking the campus trying to find the indoor pool. Well, well I never found that indoor pool. <laughs> but anyways, so I was here to do a sports psychology with Dr. John Nixon, Dr. West, West Ruff, Dr. Pan Sothern, all wonderful people. And I had a graduate assistantship in the athletic department to teach five phys physical education classes. After about six weeks, I got bored. So I went down to the pool and, and introduced myself to the diving coach then, a guy named Clyde Devine, another wonderful man, and told him my story and said, is there a club in the area I can volunteer my services for? And he gave me this sort of wiry look and said, take those women. And it was the first year of Title IX. And he was being made, made to coach the women's team and he wanted no part of it. So I automatically became the head women's coach at Stanford University by walking down the door. Uh, a couple years later, Clyde retired and we started develop developing the team. The college team won a few All-Americans, but it took about four or five years before we had a chance to win a national title. In 1983, we won our first national title. And when the young girl walked up to the podium to get her award, just like tonight, they played music. And the music they played then was to the theme to flash dance. <laughs> and it was a real emotional time for me. So after it was over, I went, went home and I quickly rushed out to buy the, the film and look at the film. So I don't know if any of you remember that old movie. But in it, the story is there's a young girl who wants to be a dancer. She wants to get accepted into a school like Juilliard. She works all day in a, a steel factory, works at night, and then still trains at night. And after a given period of time, she gets really frustrated and decides she's gonna give it up. Well, she has an older boyfriend and she goes to tell the older boyfriend and he just gives her an awful look, shakes his head and says, you don't get it. You don't understand. When you, when you lose the dream, you die. And for something, some reason, a, a lightning bolt went, over, went off over my head. And from that point forward, the theme, I would say, of Stanford diving was always to dream. And I have many, many divers here tonight, and they all can vouch for me. Every team meeting, every individual meeting, the theory, the dream, to have the courage to dream, to know how to dream, was what we always emphasize. About five or six years later, <clears throat> I had the great uh, privilege to meet probably one of the, probably the most amazing student athlete I've ever had here. Her name was Amy. And I'm not sure I can get through this. Her name was Amy, and she wasn't the best diver. She was a walk-on who probably improved a tremendous amount and got to be a, a conference, conference uh, uh, scorer. But she did become our captain her senior year. And, and we had a real good team that year, but they all admired her because she was just such an amazing person, a beautiful girl, very intelligent, 
very outgoing, very energy driven, very kind. And I knew there was going to be great things coming from this girl once she, she in later in life. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. She, was, she majored in African American studies, did her honors thesis on Namibia when it was uh, separating from South Africa. And about four years after she graduated, she went to South Africa to do a Fulbright. One afternoon, she was giving two of her friends rides home to the township, and she came upon a protest and she was killed. Now, this was devastating to all of us. It was in a national and international news. And her parents were from Southern California, and we went down there for the funeral. And the night before the funeral, we were all in the, her living room, all her friends, all, many of the divers, and myself. President Clinton had just called to give his condolences. And they were around the circle telling Amy stories. And the one great ability of Amy, more than anything else, she was one of those unique persons who had five, six really important interests in her life. She really loved, really had passions. But when you were with her, she made you feel like you were her number one passion. So when we were going around the circle telling Amy stories, the question came up, what do you think Amy's true passion, number one passion in college was? And her roommate just jumped up immediately and said, it was her coach and her team. About 10 years later, then Stanford Diving took off. We won several national championships, et cetera, and I had the great privilege of going to the Olympics with, with Cassidy and Christian. Christian won us bronze, and with Cassidy had the, the, after the, the event later in the week. It was women's three meter. After four dives, Cassidy was in a little out of third place. We were real excited, because we hadn't had a woman score in uh, women's three meter since 1980. So we were real excited. I'm sure the TV announcers back in the States were really, really excited. Well, unfortunately, Cassidy, Cassidy mixed, missed the next dive, and she didn't get a medal. When a diver misses a dive, they get out of the water, they come up to their coach. You say a few words, and, and, and they move on. Well, to this day, I don't know remember what I said to Cassidy after that dive. But I do remember looking down at my phone, and there was a text there. And it was from Carol, the first girl I ever recruited in 1979. And it said, is Cassidy OK? Did you give her a hug? I mean, I don't think these two girls knew each other. But they were separated by 30 years, but they were family. Uh, and last thing I want to say is when I retired, probably not deservingly, but I had some wonderful things said about me, some things written in text, some on in emails, and some things on Facebook. And there was this wonderful testament said in, said, written about me on Facebook about how, what it was like to be a Stanford diver. And there's a line in it that has probably more meaning than anything, any compliment I've ever been given. And I, I think it, it, it really means a lot to the divers also. And the line said, he, he taught me to dream. I know it sounds trite, but he taught me to dream. People, I've been blessed. I feel very honored, and I'm very appreciated for tonight.